Hey, it's Mark coming to you from the uh, butcher shop at Baker's Green Acres, and we are doing a series on the declaratory ruling. This is downloadable at michigandnr.gov. This is a declaratory ruling. Uh, they have given us this and uh, let, let us know if uh, the pigs that we own are illegal or not. And we've been going through the monikers that they've given us, and we have been going through the um, list of characteristics. And we are on the eighth characteristic right now, and let's go through that. This one is ear structure. Suscropa exhibit erect ear structure. Okay, erect. That would be like a German Shepherd, you know, the ears stick up straight. Hybrids of Suscropa exhibit either erect or folded slash floppy ear structure. Okay, so that they're saying is, remember, one or more characteristic, and you have a feral pig, feral pigs are added to the invasive species order. Uh, if your pig has a, an erect ear, that's an illegal pig. If your pig has a folded or floppy ear, that's an erect pig. Uh, <laughs> that's a, an illegal pig. And remember, if you are keeping illegal pigs on your premise, uh, they say that you are guilty of a felony offense, so you risk felony arrest, um, $10,000 per animal. And that's, they're serious about that. Okay, then we go to the ninth characteristic, and this is the one that they want to distance themselves from the most. Okay? It reads this way. Other characteristics not currently known to the Michigan DNR that are identified by the scientific community. All right? <laughs> it sounds like something from Saturday Night Live, but it really isn't. This is signed by the director, and it was issued on the 13th day of December 2011. This is the real deal. So what they've done is they've seen that other characteristics that they don't know about yet identified by the scientific community. Now that's a little bit worrisome because they're saying that that community uh, has the authority to tell you whether your animal is legal or not. And I've said all along, um, this scenario, you can take pigs out of this, you can take farmers out of this, you can take the DNR out of this. But what you have, if you take all those things out, is you have a regulatory agency and you have a business environment, people participating in commerce, and a regulatory agency like the DNR decides one day, under the pressure of certain other entities, that uh, it'd be a good idea to get all pigs off the countryside and uh, have them all in confinement. That would be a good idea. It would benefit some, you know, it would definitely benefit some people, but that's not how our system works. Um, the people that are raising pigs out on the land have been doing so since the, you know, I don't know, I think recorded 15th century at least in this country, uh, well, it doesn't matter. But I, I know feral pigs were introduced into this country in the 16th and 17th century. There's record, records of that, but um, that's a whole other story. But uh, other characteristics not currently known identified by the scientific community. Okay, who's the scientific community? Um, are we scientists as farmers? I think we are. Um, we, they didn't check with us before they did this. Or maybe they should have now, now that we look at this. Okay, um, I want to bring up another point. There's your declaratory ruling. Uh, took it apart the best I could. It's going to be our best friend when we go to trial with these guys. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the book, Dr. Jack Nair's book. Uh, in his book, there are great segments of this book dedicated to uh, explaining the release of animals, the purchase and release of animals, uh, pigs. And usually the ones that they purchase and release are these right here, and then sometimes called, called Russians. So they call them Russians once in a while. That's a nickname, actually. The Eurasian wild boar, uh, they're bred uh, in captivity, and then uh, natural resources people uh, purchase them, and then they try to get these populations going in remote areas. And they do that for the purposes of 
uh, revenue through hunting. Right now, I think that's kind of interesting that the DNR, the people who we are engaged in, in in court, are interested in commerce, the commerce of hunting. I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, they sell licenses and all that money goes to them. They have a pretty big budget, they have a lot of nice toys, they employ a lot of people, it's a good outfit to work for, it's like high pay, and you like to you know, throw your weight around a little bit. Uh, but there's kind of a problem with that. Uh, these natural resources are everybody's resources, and for these guys to be making money off of it is wrong. Here's an example. The DNR in many, many places has said that uh, feral swine in the great state of Michigan, they're, they're, they're everywhere, right, first of all, uh, which is a lie. They're nowhere. No one can find them. But if you could find them, uh, it is legal per our leg legislative uh, process to shoot them, all right, 365 days a year if you have a valid hunting license or a concealed carry permit. I don't understand the concealed carry permit, but uh, the hunting license. All right, a feral pig in the state of Michigan is not a game animal. It is an invasive species, according to the Department of Natural Resources, which I really don't have a problem with that. If they want to declare it uh, a problem, fine. It doesn't affect me until they start coming on my side of the fence and saying, your pigs are feral, and I have a problem with that. But feral pigs, if we had them in Michigan, uh, it's no fault of mine or anyone that I know. So if they want to do that, that's okay. But then they've given us the authority to shoot them on site. Why do you need a hunting license to do that? So you got to go and buy a hunting license from the DNR to shoot a feral pig? Well, I suppose then you could call up the DNR and say, hey, where are the feral pigs? Now, why don't we try that? Why don't we try that? Uh, a lot of people are listening to this, and that would be a good thing to do. Why don't we call up the DNR and say, hey, where can I go get me some of them feral pigs? They should know, right? I don't think they will. But let's try that. And then uh, let's ask the question, why do we need a hunting license to shoot feral pigs? Now, I, uh, you know, I farm here, and occasionally we have problems with certain uh, wildlife that have become pests and uh, let's say a rat if there's a rat in your barn do I need to be calling up the DNR to see if I can shoot this rat do I have to have a hunting license to shoot the rat so what's the difference between a rat and a feral pig hmm I think that the DNR is going after these animals as a way of going after people who run hunting operations now you guys know I do not run a hunting operation. I have nothing to do with them, you know. Uh, for no reason other than it's not just, it's not something I've ever done. I've never really thought about paying money to shoot a pig. I shoot them for free all the time. Uh, it's not something I would do. However, our country is based on liberty and justice for all. Now, if hunting farms or hunting preserves as they call them. There's one across the road from me where they hunt pheasants. Um, if that's a bad thing, then let's outlaw it. All right, so it should go through the legislative process and uh, we'll, we'll outlaw that, all right? Can't happen, you know, because people are making a living off it. It's like outlawing uh, commercial fishing. Can't do that, people make a living doing that or outlawing farming. So what the DNR is doing is they're going after a species, invasive species, right? They're using the invasive species order to go after hunting operations, but it's going to bite them, and here's how it's going to bite them. Here's my prediction. They are in cahoots with the, with the uh, Michigan pork producers. We can prove that. <clears throat> I'd have been sued by now if they wanted it, because I've already said it. And... Their guy, Dr. Jack Mayer, who they base their declaratory ruling off of, states in his book that all pigs come from the Eurasian wild boar. It's on page 271. It's, I don't need to read it. All pigs come from the Eurasian wild boar. So in the declaratory ruling, you remember they said 
any crossbreed, hybrid, or anything of the Eurasian wild boar is prohibited. Well, they just prohibited every pig in the, in the state of Michigan. And that's the Michigan pork producers' pigs, too. And when this is brought out in court, uh, Michigan pork producers who are pushing this on us are going to say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, we didn't mean that. Right? So it, it's going to get interesting when, when we go to court. And uh, I think this is going to blow up in their face. And when it's all said and done, um, we hope to expand the Mangalitsa business here in Michigan and, and do very well with it. And we think it'll actually provide jobs for people. And uh, it may be a different way of life, but it's our business. It's definitely our business. It's not their business. And so uh, my message on this is let's keep going. Let's get this done. Okay. Mark from Baker's Green Acres signing off.